Good Sunday morning. Welcome to WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Listick. We got a lot to get to this morning, but we're going to begin here in Chicago. On Thursday, after just a few hours of deliberation, a jury found former House Speaker Mike Madigan's one-time Chief of Staff Tim Mapes guilty on both perjury and obstruction of justice charges. Now, the trial gave rare insight into Madigan's inner circle as he phases his own trial next year. Alyssa Donovan has more from inside the courtroom. Tim Mapes, surrounded by his defense team, quickly walked out of the Dirksen Federal Building on Thursday. The 68-year-old found guilty of perjury and obstruction of justice by a federal jury. During the three-week trial, prosecutors argued Mapes lied to a grand jury that was investigating former Illinois Speaker Mike Madigan and his allies. The government providing the jury with recordings and wiretaps that demonstrated Mapes lied to protect Madigan and Springfield insider Mike Michael McLean. While he claimed to have no knowledge of the pair's political dealings, the jury was convinced otherwise. Both McLean and Madigan are charged with bribery and racketeering following that same grand jury's investigation. The defense argued that Mapes was not shown specific documents during his grand jury testimony or played any recordings, and that he had no motive to lie during his testimony. Representative Kelly Cassidy, a Democrat who says she faced retaliation after speaking out about Madigan's handling of harassment claims, issuing a statement today about the verdict, saying in part, Today's verdict is a vindication for those who, over the years, were willing to stand up and speak out in the face of injustice and abuse by Mapes and his boss. More importantly, I hope it brings closure and some peace to those who shared their stories with me privately, but still feared retribution from Mapes. Mapes will be sentenced on January 10th. At the Dirksen Federal Building, Alyssa Donovan, WGN News. Now, acting U.S. Attorney Morris Pasquale said that Mapes' conviction should stand as a clear message to witnesses that they will be held accountable. Republicans in Springfield already using the verdict as another opportunity to call for more ethics reform at the State House. Ethics reform should be the General Assembly's top priority. How many indictments is too many? How many guilty verdicts is it going to take for the Democrats to join with Republicans and pass tough, necessary sweeping reforms to our ethics laws to clean up government and stamp out corruption for good. The time to act is now. Lawmakers are due back in Springfield towards the end of October. That's for the fall veto session. But a spokesperson for House Speaker Emanuel Chris Welch pointed to some steps the legislature has already taken that include overhauling the House leadership team, passing bills requiring more disclosure of potential conflicts, and hiring a new legislative inspector general. Former House Speaker Madigan slated to stand trial on bribery and racketeering charges next April, just a few weeks after Illinois' primary election. Joining me to talk about all that and much more, Pat Brady. He once served as the chair of the Illinois Republican Party, a former prosecutor himself, and now he's consulting with candidates as the head of Next Generation Strategies. Pat, good morning. Good to see you. Great to be here. Uh, Next Generation is the per perfect title for your company. I'm going to talk about the Next Generation in a moment. Yeah. But first, look, Mapes knew that they had him on tape. That would, he would have heard all that, seen all of that um, ahead of time. Why did he go through with this trial? Maybe they just didn't give him an offer that he could accept. I mean, he's looking at some, some jail time here, even under the uh, maybe 18, 21 months or th that kind of range. So maybe just nothing he could do but go to trial. But it, it Now may, he faces 20 years. Well, arguably, but it's, it's probably in the two or three, maybe four-year range if you go by the guidelines. And th th that's the max. So first-time offender, I don't think he's going to get that much. But he's, he's probably going to go to the penitentiary. But he probably just didn't have an offer he could accept. And I th there's with Mapes, anybody knows him, there's a certain degree of arrogance that he thought he could get away with But this. loyalty as well? Well, loyalty got him here in the first place. <laughs> Remember, and as you know, the judge called him in and said, you get immunity, but if you lie, you're in trouble. And he went in and lied anyway. And it's not like this was even a close call. It's true, it was only hour, three hours or three and a half yeah. hours. So, so you're a former prosecutor. What are the chances? I mean, because now if you're Mapes, you're going, okay, I don't want to do 20 years. What do you want me to do? Can he still turn? Is it too late? Uh, he could... I mean, anything's always on the table, but what value is he? He's a convicted perjurer after lying in the grand jury, going to trial, although he didn't take the stand, which probably helped him. He didn't lie on the stand yeah. again, but of what value? And I think what they've learned from this whole process with Mapes, they didn't really need him because they were trying to, they needed him, they thought, to make the McLean-Madigan connection. But what came out in the ComEd trial, there's plenty of evidence. You know, like or dislike the federal prosecutors, these guys are very, very thorough. 
And these two prosecutions we've seen, I've never seen such overwhelmingly quickly verdicts on all counts. So there might be a deal for him, but it won't be the deal he would have had. had I, I can't imagine his value. Yeah. Uh, maybe there is, but uh, it's a long shot. I mean, the other, so, some of the other folks are still out there. They're not doing a sentence until January. Right. So maybe they're working on him, but I, I think he's much less valuable than he would have been. All he had to do is go and tell the truth, and he's, he's off with his pension for the rest of his life. So as you know, Mike Madigan famously stayed away from cell phones, stayed away from emails. These other people sort of took care of that. If you're Mike Madigan, how well are you sleeping now? Not well, because these are quick or fair, relatively quick, overwhelming findings of guilt. And if you look through the Madigan case, it's a broad racketeering case. And, and you've read the indictment. Um, it's, it's a pretty significant legal document so far as uh, outlining the criminal conduct they've accused of him. If, if they can prove that up, he's going to jail for a long time. Your former head of the Republican Party, we heard Republicans in that uh, story basically saying we need ethics reform, and Speaker Welch would say, we're giving it to you. We've been giving it to you. Yeah, and I think there's always room for ethics reform. There's always room for improvement. But I will say, the good news from all the Mapes and the Madigan and all this stuff is that Speaker Welch doesn't run Springfield like those guys did. There is a different feel down there. He's much more accessible. It's open. Back then, you couldn't get into Madigan's office. It literally was like getting into Oz. And Mapes was the gatekeeper and McLean was the conduit. But that's all changed. But there's always room for ethics reform. But it is different. I think most taxpayers should take some solace in knowing that, that Speaker Welch does run a different operation down there. And we'll continue to follow that and talk to you about it. But let's go national for a bit. The debates happened this week, first Republican debate. Some would say, why does anybody care? In fact, whoever wins Iowa, we'd be talking to President Cruz right now or if, you know, if that happens. So is, is Iowa more, sorry, is, is the first debate more about the money people? I mean, like Ken Griffin, he, he's not even committed yet. Is that who was watching this primarily? I think this was unique insofar as, as a first debate because the, the main player wasn't there. So it gave these candidates, the eight candidates, an opportunity to be heard. And I was up there and I watched the whole thing. I think the clear choice for Republicans, if they want to win not only the presidency, but get more uh, people in the House and win the Senate back is Nikki Haley. Her, the big issue is going to be, as you know, it's going to be abortion. Mm -hmm. She gave the best, most well-reasoned, don't demonize women. This is a tough issue and there's things we can agree on. That's the best message I've heard out of a Republican candidate on that issue in a long time. I thought she was masterful on that, also saying you don't have 67 votes in the Senate. Right. So why are you talking about this? It just stirs Let's people just up. Let's just tell the truth, exactly. But in addition, of course, a lot of tension was being put on Vivek Ramaswamy, um, who, you know, we, we now learn that he's good at throwing punches, but taking them maybe not so so well. <laughs> Nikki Haley, man, she, as far as I'm concerned, she decked him when it came to international relations. She did, and uh, if you know any of the, her history, she's been a fighter since her days in the South Carolina House. She fought her way into the governor. Ownership. She's as tough or tougher than anybody on that stage, and she took him down uh, quite a peg. And she actually understands what's going on in the Ukraine and the whole Russia yeah. thing. But it didn't seem like he did. And I thought that was, other than the abortion answer, I thought that was the highlight of her debate. But I thought overall she was the clear winner. Republicans, of course, say we are the law and order party. How do you justify that as former head of the Illinois Republican Party? How do you justify that when you're asked if President Trump is convicted, not if he's convicted, would you still support him? And all the hands go up, except for Christy and Asa Hutchinson. Yeah, and she actually, Nikki Haley, Ambassador Haley, explained her an answer on that afterwards. And it makes some sense. And I'm not saying I agree with this necessarily, but if, he, if we're going to put an 80-year-old man in prison, uh, the former president, I can see where you would, if he's convicted, you just pardon him. We want Trump to go away. It's a bad look for the country. And I think as long as Trump's around, at some point, the financial markets are going to start reacting to all this. And that's when it's going to be make a big difference. But I do agree, it's tough to make a law and order argument when you're not enforcing law and order in your own house. And maybe the issue is not making that point to say, look, we understand if he broke the law, a price should be paid, but the country has issues to deal with and there are other ways perhaps to handle this. Right. Uh, uh, Trump Gerald him. Ford, as yeah. much as he was criticized for pardoning Nixon, probably did the right thing. And it cost him the presidency. It cost him the presidency. I don't, he probably listen, knew it. I want everybody to be held accountable, too, but the reality is we've got to take a big picture view of this, and it's probably not the best thing for our economy, for our, 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 our uh, exposure on the national stage, to have our 80-year-old president sit in the penitentiary. So Thursday night... Uh, as much as some of us yeah. wouldn't mind that. It's well, probably, people, some people see it as justice, others see it I, listen, differently. I, I, honest, I read all these indictments. This guy should never be in public office again, and he probably needs to go to jail, but maybe there's a bigger concern down the road. How do you explain? Thursday night, he showed up in Georgia, got his mugshot taken, which you can now buy in a T-shirt for $36 from his campaign. <laughs> so there's no, master, no better spinner of a bad thing oh, than Donald his mug Trump. Shot? Yeah, of course. I did a comparison with Bogoyevich. They both, I think, I think he did a little better than Rod even on his mugshot. <laughs> yeah, but Rod didn't sell T-shirts. 
No, but he, he's a carnival. He's just, he, this is all. Why do the numbers keep going up is really what I'm well, asking. Well, there's a couple polls out this morning that kind of show that it's starting to fade a little bit. And remember, back to your initial question, these national polls are meaningless. This is state by state. You can come out of New Hampshire 10 down and go to South Carolina 10 up. It, it all, they're state by state races. And, and Iowa, I, I agree with you, is less relevant. New Hampshire is when it really starts. And then you go into uh, the Carolinas and then Super Tuesday. So it can change quickly. But it's a great mystery to me why the Republican Party would support Donald Trump. He's done nothing but lose for us since he's been in here. He's killed us in Illinois. He's cost us two congressional seats. We could lose more seats in the Illinois House. He's at the top of the ticket. So it makes no sense, especially when we've got a candidate like Nikki Haley that can appeal to suburban women. Let me just turn. Um, tomorrow, there's a couple of things happening in court. Mark Meadows trying to get his case removed in Georgia uh, to the federal court. And then we've got um, Washington, D.C., where we could get a decision from Judge Shutkin about when the trial is going to be. Your overall sense of will these trials, any of them happen prior to an election and in time for people to make some judgments? Yeah, I don't think the Georgia, I never really liked the Georgia one because I think it's too broad. But I, I, my wish is they'd all get together and they can talk to one another and go, let's try this January 6th case in the D.C. The judges can't. Well, the, even the prosecutor, stand down. Let's get, get our January 6th case done first. The interests of justice are served. If we get a guilty verdict on that, a lot of this goes away. But that's the one that probably needs to be tried to satisfy the American public that justice has been served. But they can talk to one another. They're, you know, they're not, they should be going, hey, guys, this is not working. We have four, this one in Georgia has got 19 defendants. Uh, that can't go to trial for a couple of years, right? Yeah, and it won't go with 19, but we'll talk about yeah, that more yeah. in the coming time. Pat Brady, always good to see you. Good to see you Thank Paul. you, sir. Former prosecutor, former head of the Illinois Republican see Party. See you next election. And next right? generation, yeah, <laughs> if not before. We're going to take our first break. Coming up next on WGN-TV Political Report, Democrats are celebrating one year since a landmark bill put more money towards clean energy. But with extreme weather hitting every region of the U.S., is there anything more Congress can do to combat climate change? Illinois Congressman Sean Kasten joins me when we come back.